and today I'd like to ask you guys a question. Why do you want a tune? Now, I'm not trying to discourage you from buying a tune, whether from Lund Racing or anyone else. But you have to ask yourself the question, why am I buying a tune? So the reason I say this is because some people buy a tune under the pretense that it's going to make more power. I get this question asked of me all of the time. Hey Alex, how much power do you think the car is making? Then I look over the mod list and it has a stock cold air. It's running 89 octane and it has no mods. And I say, it's probably not making much more power than stock, but it will perform better. And I think that's where customers start to get a little frustrated and it, it's unwarranted because I think it's due to misinformation. A lot of customers, when they first were introduced to tunes, they were looking at these edge programmers on diesel trucks and bully dog programmers and banks power, you know, selectable one, two, three, four, five. So you're like, oh, well, my Mustang can do that. My F-150 can do that. No, most of the times those cars are boosted and they have adjustable boost levels. Whereas your naturally aspirated car is pretty much is what it is. So if you have a stock cold air, 91 octane, no mods, and your car made 390 rear wheel horsepower, well, after a tune, it might make 395 rear wheel horsepower. And people are gonna go, well, that's not what I paid for. Actually, what you paid for was the performance, not the power output. Bear with me. Let's say you have a 6R80 car. And in stock fashion or stock form, the car shifts at 6,800 RPMs. The one, two shift happens at 6,800, the two, three happens at 6,800. Uh, the converter locks up, then the 3.4 happens. And then you run, let's say, uh, 12.9. Okay, then you get a tune. Now the shifts happen at 7,500 each time. The converter lockup is a little different than it was from the factory. And you go back and look at your time slip. Now the car is running at 12.50. Same power output, but the performance has been enhanced. So the way I tell people how to think about tuning is setting you up for the future. Now you have a foundation. Now we know that your car is running well. Now we have your car in our, our system or a tune that you choose has your car in their system. Now you can grow with those modifications and almost never, like I don't think I've ever had a customer not modify the vehicle further after they've initially gotten tuned. So I say, well, here's your chance to now go forward with your tuning uh, story or adventure, whatever you want to call it. So typically a naturally aspirated guy, let's say a Gen 1 guy, manual. This is pretty much what they do. They get a tune, then they go E85. So tune, E85 with an injector, then a cold air. Then they go, okay, now what's next? Should I spend 1100 bucks on long tubes or should I save for boost? Well, typically someone like me would ask them, what do you want to do with the car? Some people are really sticklers about sticking with a naturally aspirated setup. Some people just want to have a great naturally aspirated car that is reliable and they don't really want to go the boost route. So I say, well, if you're going to go that route, I'd suggest you get a PMAS cold air, a boss intake, and then you get long tubes, LU47 injectors, and you can go E85 or pump gas and you'll have two tunes for each. Sorry, one tune for each. So then you go, okay, well, that's good for me because I can probably run way into the 11s, have a very reliable vehicle, and it's not really gonna stress out the car and the motor's probably gonna last you well into 100,000 miles unless you don't maintain it properly. But then you get other guys that wanna go boost right away. They actually progress with the car pretty quickly. They go cold air, and before they buy injectors, they ask their tuner what's the next you know, reasonable route. And I ask them the same question, what do you wanna do with the car? The moment they want to go boost, they, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to go dig racing or they're going to go roll racing. They want something that they can daily on pump gas, make 600 horsepower and get after it in case anybody lines up with them uh, on the highway or something like that. I say, well, if you're going to go dig racing and you have an automatic car, you can get a TVS or a Whipple, front feed Whipple, three, three liter is awesome. If you're going to do roll racing mostly, I highly suggest you guys get yourself uh, a centrifugal. Centrifugal really drive awesome the stock throttle body uh, driving characteristics are pretty much stock until you get into the higher RPMs and it, it's more favorable for roll racing. I like positive displacement blowers like a TVS, Whipple, Edelbrock, 
uh, anything of that nature in order for you to get out of the hole quicker. But if you're not doing any kind of drag racing in that capacity, honestly, a centrifugal is fine. Turbos are another conversation. In my opinion, turbos are when you want to go racing and want to get really serious. You can make a thousand horsepower on any supercharged application if your motor is going to be built for it. So the moment we start talking turbos is when we start talking about you know, 11, 12, 1300 horsepower and up. So I kind of avoid those conversations. What I want to avoid is having you have unrealistic expectations from just a tune. A tune will make your car perform better. It's not going to make more power. There isn't just a magical 30 horsepower in a tune, especially on late model engines. Maybe back in the day, cars were so detuned that there wasn't really much there. But modern vehicles, pretty much since after OBD2 came out, are pretty difficult to make power just in a tune application only. Now, boosted vehicles, that changes everything, especially depending on the octane you're running. Okay, if you're going to be stuck on pump gas forever, I tell people with Coyotes, stick to 10 to 11 PSI. There is no reason to go past 10 or 11 PSI on pump gas if uh, that's going to be the fuel you're going to be uh, dealing with most of the time. No reason to go past 11 PSI. But some people, for whatever reason, want to make a lot of power on pump gas. And I tell them, well, are you potentially willing to replace the motor? And they look, they look at me like I'm crazy. I go, no, we have to have a realistic conversation here. So again, to recap, naturally aspirated cars, you're not really going to make a bunch of power just on the tune alone. It is the foundation to set you up for the future of modding that vehicle. If you want to stay the NA route, there are plenty of recipes out there that tell you how to best, let's say, optimize the setup for the application. If you're gonna go boost, you're gonna need to tune anyway to get you started. So we have to figure out what you wanna do with that boosted application. You just want a little oomph, you just want uh, a little bit of more top end power, well then we can choose the proper power adder for you. But again, as a tuner, my job is to tune the combination in front of me and to best advise the customer the best way of going about getting that goal. A lot of people wanna do street racing. I go, okay, well, what kind of street racing do you do? Do you do roll racing mostly or dig racing mostly? If it's dig racing, is it prepped properly? I've heard a lot of people make the biggest uh, mistake is by getting a 10 R80 car and going to a no prep event. So we have to really kind of um, set the expectations low on a even a 6 R80 car at a no prep event. Remember, no prep involves minimal grip. So what is a factory style automatic transmission do when you pedal the car, it upshifts. And all of a sudden you go one, two, three. When you let go of the gas and you mat it again, then it goes three, two, one, and it's not a good time. The internals don't like it. The car doesn't like it. At the end of the day, unless you go to a very prepped uh, event, like a very sticky track, you're not really gonna have a good time with a factory style transmission. Anytime any tire spin occurs and you let off the gas, it's gonna come in an upshift, regardless of how the tune is set up. Unless you have it set up in such a weird way that it never downshifts and you can pedal it, I highly uh, discourage that kind of tuning because it can really mess things up if you really think about it. But at the end of the day, don't rely on the tune for everything. There are a lot of cars out there that you see get down and dirty, right? You you go see a lot of these cars at street races or street car takeovers or your local track, and they tell you, well, it's got a Whipple 1300s and a fuel system. And then you go, okay, I'm gonna buy a Whipple 1300s and a fuel system. Come to find out the car has more suspension work than you can think of. It has been scaled. What does that mean? Meaning the weight distribution is at a, is at a desirable level. These cars can hook on the street and you think that it's all in the tune when in actuality, a lot of the chassis work has been done, meaning moving weight around so that the car meets a certain, uh, let's say, weight bias that is favorable for the type of racing that you're doing. So don't rely on the tune to magically fix everything. You have to do some of the work on your end too. More often than not, the, the advice I give to most roll guys that want to go fours, 60 to 130 with the draggy, is get sandbags. Put them in the trunk. And they go, what? I go, yeah, get sandbags and put them in the trunk. And they think I'm crazy. I go, look, you're spinning when you, when you go what? And then the car 
let's say, uh, upshifts too quickly, short shifts, and then you're not able, able to get that favorable uh, gear uh, stack, especially on a 10 or 80 car, if you, miss, if you miss a shift of the car, short shifts. So I tell them, go get some sandbags. All of a sudden, those guys are like, oh my God, it's gripping, right. The cars that you see get down on the street, the cars that you see really get down at the track, it's not just a parts combo and they throw it at it and it just simply works. They do a lot of scaling, they do a lot of weight moving around, weight biasing, shock, uh, strut combo, and spring combo that really make the car perform. Again, it's not 100% to the tuner, up to the tuner. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick video about setting expectations before you order a tune so that you know what you're getting into. The tune by itself doesn't make magical horsepower. We have to tune for the mods and there are certain mods that respond really well than others would like cold airs, uh, cams, fuel types, etc. Hopefully this helps you guys out when it comes to asking questions uh, to your tuner about what you want to do. That is the first thing that should happen. You should know what you want to do first, then let your tuner work things out with you. Thanks for listening guys. Talk to you later.